Hey, what's up, you guys? So, first off, question. Is the glaring of my glasses going to bug you? Because I know it bugs me. That's, like, the only thing I can look at. But my contacts are coming on Friday, so I can't really do anything about it. Also, if you hear the dryer, can't do anything about that either. My mom is doing laundry. So, anyways. <laughs> the topic of today's video is anxiety once again. And... There's like a piece of hair across my forehead. <laughs> so, this is something that I don't think I've ever really talked about before. I've talked about it a lot on my channel, but I don't think I've ever talked much about this before. And would it really be a video without my cat in the background? She, she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Go chill up on the bed. Anyways, so the topic of today's anxiety chat, lovely, um, is... Like, is it hard or easy to talk about anxiety? And I'm going to talk about my personal experiences and why it is the way that it is. Or my thoughts on why it is the way that it is. Now you can't even see her because she's sitting behind my head. Anyways, <laughs> so you guys know I talk about a lot of things on my channel. Sometimes anxiety and I do my anxiety chat type videos. And it's very easy to, for me at least, to talk about these kinds of things and to put them on the internet because I, I don't really care if people are like, oh, like, meh, like, if they're like hating or whatever, if they leave me hate comments, I really don't care. So I think that's why it's so easy for me to put stuff on the internet because you guys know I get a lot of interesting comments on my room cleaning time lapses. <laughs> None of that bothers me. So by putting stuff like this out on YouTube that doesn't bother me so in a sense it's easy to talk about my anxiety and stuff like that on YouTube because I don't care if people are gonna hate on it or whatever so there's that and then we get to the topic of like people that I like know like personally that's a different story and I feel like it should be the other way around. I feel like it should be easy to talk to, like, friends and family about something like this. And hard to, like, put it out on the internet for anybody to, like, criticize or judge or whatever. But I'm the opposite, I guess. I find it very hard to talk to people about my anxiety if I'm, like, in person. And it's not everybody. It's a select amount of people. And, for example... I talk to my mom a lot about my anxiety because she has it too and she gets it and we kind of have the same thing. We both have an imbalance of chemicals, so it's like the same thing, you know? So I talk to her a lot about it sometimes. I feel like I talk to YouTube the most though, <laughs> which probably isn't good. Um, and then sometimes um, I'll talk to other people, whether it be family or friends, and I feel like from my experience, it's hard to talk to somebody who's never experienced it before and isn't like open-minded about it or anything like that. Because I have talked to people before where they kind of have the mindset of like, oh, you're just complaining, you need to get over it and like that kind of thing. And like, it's different when it's in person because then you have to like respond to that. and. If they think, okay, it's just something that you're complaining about and something that you need to get over, you might not change their mind and you're just there trying to, like, defend yourself, which probably will make you more anxious, or trying to explain to somebody, like, oh, you're doing something that's making me anxious. I've done this before. I've tried to tell people... Um, that something they're doing is making me anxious, so can they please stop or change what they're doing? And I've gotten laughed at a few times, not taken seriously. I think it, one of the things that it comes down to is if you're talking to somebody who has never really experienced, like, true anxiety before, like, there's a difference between having anxiety and having an anxiety disorder, because... Everybody has experienced anxiety sometime in their life, and some anxiety is good anxiety because it's it's the thing that keeps you, like, on task and, like, you know, going through life. 
and like doing the right things and stuff like that. But when you have an anxiety disorder, then it's like always there. When you just have anxiety, it's there like the right times, but when you have an anxiety disorder, it's like constantly there or shows up in certain situations where it typically wouldn't for somebody else, depending on the type of anxiety disorder you have. So, how do I deal with talking to people or trying to talk to people if they're not like open-minded or they don't get it or they don't take it seriously? And it's very hard. I don't have a solid answer for this question because I have not found like a solution that works 100% of the time. So, it's hard. I feel like sometimes when I talk to like some of my friends, I like rarely ever see people in person because I just live far away from all of my friends. But when I talk to them like over the internet, I feel like half the time, half of them are just like, you're just complaining about this. You're just stressed out. Like, stop complaining. Just get over it. You know, like, that's my mini fridge. <laughs> and I feel like... I don't want to like tell them about like things that are going on anxiety related mental health related things like that because I feel like they just take it as me complaining to them and then they get frustrated because they're like why are you just being so negative and like stuff and I've been through a lot of anxiety these past few days past week or so and it's it's comparable to how I felt in 11th grade, and 11th grade was like the lowest time in my life for anxiety. It was the worst ever. So, I don't want people to like, if they don't get it, I don't want them to feel like I'm just complaining and like, I, what I want, the ideal situation, is to like openly talk about how I'm feeling with somebody and then to acknowledge like, okay, I'm not complaining, but I'm just trying to like, say what's going on or talk about it or whatever so to talk to people who don't get it or who don't understand it or whatever I find that I just try to talk to them about it as little as possible because it's very frustrating to try to explain something like this to somebody if they've never experienced it so <laughs> I either just try to avoid it when I talk to people or if I do try to talk to somebody about something like this then I make sure that it's like a serious conversation and they know that I'm like not joking around and I try to make them understand like the severity of the situation like it depends like what <laughs> the situation is or what you're talking about but I try to make them understand like hey like this is like a serious thing and like this is real for me and like you know so but some people it's just impossible and they won't get it and they won't understand it and they don't want to believe that anxiety is a thing because I feel like in this day and age a lot of people think it's like cool to say like oh I have a mental illness I have anxiety I have depression like people who don't actually have it and that's making like the community of people that actually do have these things like I feel like it's giving us a bad name because there are some people who like over dramatize it if that is like I don't know if that makes sense so I feel like that might be part of the reason why some people don't take it seriously or as seriously as they should. Here's what I have learned. So, if you're feeling anxious, and I know for some people, you don't want to talk about it because that can make you more anxious or you're not comfortable talking about it, but if you want to talk about it with somebody, talk about it with somebody who understands it and who will take you seriously, or better yet, somebody who has anxiety and who understands how you're feeling 
and I think that's like your best bet for talking about your anxiety with somebody if you really have to talk to somebody who like won't take you seriously or doesn't get it if they respond negatively then like I don't want to be like just accept it and move on but don't waste your time if they won't change their mind about it or won't change their mind about what they think about it just like move on and try to make things better for yourself because trying to waste your time changing people's minds isn't <laughs> worth it so find the people that you can talk about it with and stay not stay away from the people who you can't talk about it with because I do have friends who don't get it and who don't really understand it and even family so I'm not saying like oh like stay away from them like don't talk to them whatever just don't talk to them about that subject if it causes you more anxiety about the whole situation Angel's purring so loud I don't, I don't think you're gonna be able to hear it but she's so so, I don't know if this anxiety chat helped with anything, but I just felt like making another one because I've been super anxious this past week, and I don't know what's causing it, which is like the worst part, because it's almost as bad as it was for me in 11th grade, which is weird because I'm on anxiety medication now, so it shouldn't be, like, I'm just very confused, but I knew in 11th grade it was school. School was making me anxious. And now, I don't really know what's causing me to be so anxious. I could not fall asleep for my life last night. And that's how I know it's really bad. When it starts affecting me being able to fall asleep, that's how I know it's really bad. And I was so tired, too. So I was so tired, but I couldn't fall asleep. That's, for me, that's how you know when it's really bad. And, um, I've just been, like, here's, like, a random chat about anxiety update in my life. So, I don't know what's causing it. So I can't do anything to fix it right now because I don't know why I'm anxious. But... When I am anxious, really anxious, aka like right now, the things that happen to me are I won't be able to fall asleep, and if I do fall asleep, I won't be able to stay asleep, and I won't be able to get deep sleep, which makes me really tired, even if I've gotten like 8 or 10 hours of sleep. If you don't get deep sleep, it's like you've got no sleep at all, almost. And I've been exhausted, and that's tough when you do like school or college because like you need sleep and you need a good night's sleep and you need to be able to focus and do school so you get good grades <laughs> so I've been having like just trouble like focusing on like anything even like things that I like doing like fan fiction or watching YouTube just my mind wanders so much and it doesn't even like go to like what I'm anxious about. I wish it did because then I would know but it just like goes to like the randomest things and I can't keep like a clear train of thought and then at night, at night is when it's the worst because I'll be trying to fall asleep so there's nothing else like distracting me so I'll be thinking about like the randomest things and things I have to do and things I didn't do already that I need to do and like everything that could possibly stress me out ever. <laughs> So, I think that's part of why it's hard to fall asleep when I'm super anxious, because then I just get, like, non-stop thoughts of, like, oh my gosh, chaos, you have to do this, worry about this, like, things like that. So, I think, like, because I feel like everybody has those thoughts when they're trying to fall asleep, like, you know, but when you're anxious, it's, like, it impacts you more, and it like your brain takes it more seriously I guess and your brain stresses you out and won't let you fall asleep easily so this is where I would recommend melatonin because that helps you sleep sometimes not if you're really really anxious though which is what happened to me last night so you know but 
an important thing to remember if <clears throat> it is like messing up your sleep. Like I didn't get to bed until really, 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 really late or in the morning, you could say, is don't like sleep all day to catch up on it. If, cause that'll mess up your sleep schedule and that won't be good. If you can't sleep and you finally do get to sleep, get up either at your normal time or only a few hours after your normal time because then when it comes to nighttime again, then you'll be really tired and hopefully you'll be able to fall asleep easily because you'll be so tired. So, I don't know, those are my tips and tricks. But, yeah. Random anxiety chat. I'm anxious. Hello. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been playing with this EOS this whole time because that's what I do to try to keep my brain straight because like I said, I can't focus. So this is being the thing that I can't focus on so I can focus on keeping a straight train of thought while I film this video. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this benefited you somehow. This is kind of a weird topic, but it's something I've been thinking about just because like, I don't know. I've tried to talk to people about it since I'm so anxious. And some of them did not respond too kindly. So, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> this is my favorite flavor of EOS too, by the way. It's medicated, which I love. I love the medicated ones. Cooling chamomile. My favorite ever. I love things that like make my lips minty and make them like tingle. Love that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That's like the third time I've said this. Wow. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment down below any thoughts you've had about this, if you've had any similar experiences or anything. <laughs> and hit the subscribe button, turn on my post notifications, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!